Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Greg Sloan about how the pandemic has shifted how employees are evaluating their work and their purpose. Greg Sloan, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. It is a pleasure to be with you today. I'm really excited to have a nice conversation around how the pandemic has been shifting the way employees are evaluating their work and their purpose. I'm south of Salt Lake City. Where are you joining us from today, Greg? You know, today I'm actually in Sedona, Arizona. I'm typically in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, which is where we live, but uh, we had the opportunity to move our son out to graduate school in Arizona and, and took some time off. Oh, that's wonderful. You traded hot and humid for for uh, dry and scorching heat, it sounds like. Yeah, we, uh, we were a few days in Flagstaff, which the weather at this time in Flagstaff is amazing. Uh, Sedona's mm. a little warmer, and then we head down to Phoenix, which is going to be, of course, really hot. As we get started, I just wanted to share Greg's bio with everybody. Greg Sloan is a serial founder and started his first business nearly 30 years ago. In 2006, he found himself at the peak of his professional career as a vice president for Goldman Sachs, the premier brand within the investment banking and wealth management industry. He was 37 years old. Personally, he was miserable and his marriage was on the rocks. In December of 2006, he and his wife, Catherine, spent the weekend in a cabin in the mountains in North Georgia. They took a handful of books and a series of self-reflection exercises that weekend. They each discovered their unique purpose in life. And it sounds like that was the catalyst for some, some change. Uh, and I'm sure you'll unpack that and, and share more about that with all of us today. I'm really excited to talk about how the pandemic has shifted, how we think about our lives, about our work, and ultimately our purpose. Anything else, Greg, you would like to share with me or my listeners about your background or personal context before we launch on in? No, that's a, that's a great setup. You know, the, the timing was probably more summer of 06 when I started this whole, you know, existential crisis, if you will, but it really culminated uh, in December of that year. And um, so, yeah, look forward to unpacking. Yeah, excellent. And maybe if you don't mind, if it's too personal, sure. you, you don't need to say share anything you don't want to share. Um, but, you know, this whole idea of like an existential midlife crisis, that's not new, like people experience no. those. And you don't have to be a certain age, you could have a midlife crisis in your early 20s or in your 60s. It's, it's really about just reevaluating, you know, kind of the core foundations of who you are and your identity and like yeah. what, what you're doing and kind of coming to the realization, maybe you don't want to keep doing what you've been doing. Um, so many people have experienced that to varying degrees and you might experience that multiple times in your life. Um, but I think it's, it's, so it may be a little bit scary because it's disruptive, but going through those self-reflective exercises, I think are really important because it, we only have one life to live and that can help us to recalibrate. And, and perhaps in one stage of your life, you were you know, you were miserable when you left Goldman Sachs, but my guess is you had good years where you really enjoyed what you did. And so life stage also impacts the way we focus our careers and what we want to be doing and spending our time on. Um, so it's, it's, it's really healthy to be going through that self-reflective process periodically and making shifts as appropriate. So tell us a little bit more about your process and how you went about doing that. Well, yeah. So going, going back to the timing of this, um, candidly, I thought a lot of this psychology mumbo jumbo was really that just mumbo jumbo, but 
in doing the research in the last few years, what I've found that psychologists have described in terms of, let's just call it, you know, purpose or existential crisis, um, we actually as human beings kind of go through, at least in America, but we go through this the first time probably in our early to mid 20s as we're kind of launching into our career. And then the second time in many cases is is where you go through that quote unquote midlife crisis. But um, at least that's what the research that I've read, uh, you know, and it seems to hold steady with the folks that we've worked with over the last few years. And we've we've taken over a thousand people through our process in about 10 years, starting in about 2010. Candidly, the first seven or eight years were just me helping people. It really was isn't uh there was no business around it it was just that i so enjoyed helping people go through this process but um in in terms of uh, what we developed um what i want to share is this really started with me as a personal you know thing and then um once we got through the great recession and i had launched my own wealth management firm which was much more aligned with my purpose is the way I describe it. And I think that, that uh, organizationally, we should describe it that way as well. In 2010, I realized that not only was this helping me be more fulfilled in my career, but when I was working with my financial planning wealth management clients, I realized that they were missing something as well. In fact, some of them used to say to me, you know, I feel like something is missing. Most of my clients were millionaires or multimillionaires. I, I worked with pretty uh, wealthy individuals. So it wasn't about financial success as um, one great author described it. Once we've achieved success, we really have this desire for significance. Um, I do want to share that our process is really uh, founded. If you look at our logo, it's, it's based on that Maslow's hierarchy. And Abraham Maslow in 1945, 46, wrote his seminal work about self-actualization but 20 years later, he actually started to discredit his own work, saying the peak of human existence is not self-actualization. There's actually a higher peak called self-transcendence, which is where we go beyond the self. So really, the process and purposes, uh, the process around purpose is really, it's not just about you. It's also about how are you to make it as cheesy as it's how are you making the world a better place right <laughs> yeah and may, maybe it does sound a little bit cheesy but the reality is we all want what we do to matter um Absolutely. and you know there, there are times we can get caught up again it largely depends on life stage uh you know because people have different you know priorities and areas of focus at different points in their life um but you know assuming you have your needs your basic needs met you have Correct you know, as, as you talked about with Maslow, I mean, you, you have those, some of those basic things. So you're not worried about where your next meal is coming from, or you're going to be cold tonight. Uh, you know, if, if those needs are met, then very quickly people start to get beyond, you know, kind of the mm -hmm. ego driven types of things. Mm -hmm. And they want to do stuff that matters uh, that they've derived meaning from. They want to help people. They want to make the world a better place. They, they want to help organizations be more effective and efficient. They you know there's lots of different things that people can derive meaning from. There's no one, you know, thing to, to get to purpose and meaning, but we each have to define that for ourselves. And unless we're going through that process, uh, we're, we're just, you know, over time we can find that what we were doing that we loved shifts into something that we are now doing that we despise or resent or even hate. Uh, and of course that's not going to be healthy for our mental health and for, mm -hmm. you know, you know, just carrying on, like you said, it has impacts on your family life. It could have impacts on a marriage, on your relationships with friends and family and, and all sorts of things. Um, we can't just neatly compartmentalize work in everything else. It all bleeds together. Uh, and, and we're social animals. And so we have, you know, we have to find a way to navigate all that. So wonderful. And yeah. I appreciate you sharing more about kind of your path and your journey as you're going through that process. And a little bit about what you're doing when you when you meet with clients and trying to help them understand uh, what they can be doing uh, proactively. It, you don't have to just feel like, oh, this is something happening to me. I'm powerless and I just have to write it out. I think that's some, sometimes what people think. Um, or sometimes people think I'm just going to, you know, go crazy and go, you know, get a Harley and, 
not that getting a Harley is necessarily crazy, but, but you know what I mean? Do something totally out of character, go spend a lot of money, do all these different things um, that aren't actually going to solve anything. It's not, it, you're just kind of postponing it. You're, you're kind of dulling, you know, whatever that pain is you might be feeling inside rather than doing that, like facing it head on and, and actually trying to address it is going to be a, a better long-term strategy, I think for everybody. Um, and so, so that's really important. And of course, during the last couple of years, the pandemic has provided an opportunity for people to go through this kind of existential midlife crisis or, or just a reevaluation of their career or maybe what they took, they may have taken for granted in the past that they just think, oh, you know, the grass isn't greener somewhere else. My job sucks. My job sucks. My boss is horrible. I can't stand it, but you know, it, it is what it is. And I think a lot of people had that mindset and now because of the tight labor market and because of more virtual work opportunities where you're not geographically bound, you know, to, to work only with places that are in your general area, like now people are like, do I, do I really need to put up with things that Absolutely. I don't like? And because of that, uh, and the pandemic, the pandemic has helped facilitate that, you know, uh, people, people are reevaluating. I think that's ultimately a healthy thing, even though I know it's a challenge for organizations as they're trying to staff. Yeah, and, and obviously there's an opportunity. One thing that we've discovered in working with individuals, and, and most of the people that we work with are in a work context, just to just to be clear about that. But um, as as individual workers, I'll call I'll call us all workers. I think we come into the our we come into the work experience. Number one, we would say we need a job, right? You, you start, you just I just need a job, and we've talked to people about that. And then they graduate from that. They say, but I really want a career. So you're kind of moving up this, this hierarchy, if you will. But ultimately, where the, where the fulfillment is found is when you say, but I've now discovered my calling or I've discovered my purpose. And what, one of the things that when we're talking to young people is we thought, why don't we just flip that script, right? There, there's no reason to go through those hierarchies. If you can start your uh, adulting your work journey by first discovering your purpose or your calling, then you're going to have a career that has much greater meaning. You know, um, Harvard Business Review and McKinsey has done a ton of research around this in the last few years. Again, coming back to the pandemic, um, it, it's amazing to read some of the stuff that uh, McKinsey has, has talked about. And they've put out a series of papers, research papers, and look, if you don't help your employees discover your, their, their purpose at work, then you're bound to risk losing them to other organizations that will. Uh, I want to talk briefly about one of the companies that I feel like has done such a great job, and it's Unilever. Um, and I don't know a whole lot about that company, but in 2009, the leadership of Unilever went through a Discovery Your Purpose workshop, I think over 400 individuals. So this is preceding the pandemic. Obviously, it was coming out of a different crisis or was in the middle of a different crisis. It was so successful that two years later, they decided that all employees should go through a workshop. And uh, in a recent paper I read, as of last year, they have like 150,000 employees worldwide something like 60,000 had gone through a Discover Your Purpose workshop. Now, when we talk about the um, how does this all come together, ultimately, I believe it's really about this, right? You want to align the personal purpose and the organizational purpose. Because if you can get those two in alignment, then what we would say is all parties can prosper on purpose together. And what, what the pandemic, I think, has really um, driven home is this transition from improving shareholder value to improving stakeholder value. It's got to, the, the organizations have learned with Patagonia and, and uh, so many others that have shown that they're willing to, to publicly declare a person, a, a organizational purpose that they're now competing against other organizations that do that. And um, Gallup and, and BetterUp just, just did some studies that said 
millennials and Gen Z in particular are willing to take up to a 23% pay cut up over the life of their earnings if they can align with organizations that have more meaning and purpose to them. So th there are numbers, there are, there, there are, um, there are positive return on investments um, for the organizations that do this. Yeah, you cite some really interesting reports and studies, and that's consistent with every, everything I've seen, yeah. both in, in yeah. industry reports as well as in academic papers and, and studies. Yeah. Um, everyone wants meaning and purpose in their work, don't get me wrong, but particularly younger yeah. millennials and Gen Z workers, they just kind of expect it and demand it. And they're willing yeah. to sacrifice a lot, a lot of other things that traditionally in terms of lifestyle, older generations may have seen as necessary. And they're just saying, I don't need right. that. You know, I don't need a big home. Right. Uh, I'm going to go live in my sprinter van or I'm going to get a tiny house or, you know, whatever. Like there's a thousand things that their priorities are just different. Uh, and so some people point to that and say, well, that's different is bad. And, and so they demonize younger people it ultimately doesn't really matter. Like their priorities are different. And if we as organizations want to be able to hire them and retain them, we're going to have to, we're going to have to create an employment context and situation and experience that they want to be a part of. Otherwise we're going to lose them out to other organizations. Yeah. And, and again, so I spent 25 years as a financial advisor, wealth advisor. And I think the general thought was for my senior level executives is they had to go through this challenging career for 15, 20, 30 years, whatever it was of, I don't want to say misery, but they were struggling and coping so that they could reach the, the, you know, they could get that brass ring, which is the quote unquote retirement. Then they could have a more fulfilled life. And as you can probably imagine, um, many of them don't make it that far, right? You get into your fifties and, and you're physically not healthy or uh, not only were there a a lot of individuals that passed away prematurely and before retirement, but just even if you were able to make it financially into that retirement, you're not healthy enough to really enjoy the lifestyle that you hope for. So again, I think we in this new era have an opportunity, and particularly with technology. Look, technology has, has really changed the workplace. I think for the better, personally, I was one that didn't really ever see myself in a work from home in a remote situation. The pandemic forced me um, to readjust. So I actually sold my company in January of 2020 uh, and worked with the new organization for a year during the transition. Well, three months into the sale, the pandemic hit and everyone was forced to go work from home. And I just had this, this panic attack thinking I'm not going to be successful because I've just never been able to be, um, be productive in a work from home environment. But what's that old saying, uh, you know, um, invention or invention is the mother of necessity is the mother of invention. And being forced to work from home about two or three months into it, I thought, wow, this is actually, this works. And when you think about the generation that comes, I'm 52 years old. When you think about that generation that comes behind us, uh, my kids are 22, 24, and 26. It's nothing for them to think of a work by having a, you know, a Mac in, in front of you. And of course, this is what work looks like. So we have a great opportunity to, to really change the landscape. Uh, those of us that are, that are in this space, you know, I come from a finance background and I'm now into this sort of HR work uh, environment. And it's really um, been eye-opening and been fulfilling for me to incorporate not just the financial components for the company and for the individuals, but also uh, the fulfillment uh, and being more purpose-driven and purpose-centered. I'm wondering now in, in the remaining time that we have, if we can get into some specifics of what people can do anyone listening you know yeah. if they're if they're wanting to kind of take the first step into that into the darkness uh to yeah. even open themselves up to the question of whether or not you know what they're doing is what they should be doing <laughs> uh to, to start the reevaluation process how do we start that and and what are some tips as we as we get started so, so let me let me just share a simple this is this is not proprietary this is just something i found myself doing in my career and it really is is described in love hate, tolerate. 
And what I would do on an annual basis, approximately when I was in my 30s, is what percentage of my job, I'm a math guy, right? So I'm always trying to get something to a number, to a metric. What percentage of my job do I love? Okay, it's 30%. What percentage of my job do I hate? Mm, That's 20%. That means the other 50% is something that I tolerate. So it's just a very simple self-reflection. What percentage do you love? What do you hate? What do you tolerate? Now, ultimately, I think people leave jobs not because of what they love and what they tolerate. It's because the percentage of what they're doing on a day-to-day basis, the quote-unquote hate, exceeds the love. And ultimately, you know, if, if, if we could live in nirvana, right, it'd be 100% of what we do in a day-to-day basis we love. I don't think that's achievable, but when the percentage that you hate of what, you, what you're doing on a day-to-day basis far exceeds the other, it, you know, you really should take a look, take a step. Now, in terms of, of um, personal purpose. Not, number one, Americans, and I think this might be a global statistic, but 70% of human beings, when you describe the word purpose, their mind goes to their work. 70%. That means 30% of us you know, think about nonprofit and family and some other things. But so for organizations and for individuals, you're not alone. And it's common to, to be in that place to, to really think about it. There are, of course, numerous ways. If you just Google, you know, how do I find my purpose? There's tons of ways to do it. Obviously, we use this. We use software. We use a, a self-guided program. We sell it to organizations. But um, it, it starts with really that point of self-reflection. And using, using my little love, hate, tolerate, I would say start there and, and really then say, okay, now that I realize it's not what I was designed for, we define sort of purpose as the best definition of the best version of me. Um, and, and you want to get there, right? Uh, everywhere from Maslow. I listened to one of your other podcasts, by the way, and one of your guests talked about eudaimonia and, and, uh, and the Greeks talking about, uh, really there are two things that we in life make decisions about. We either make hedonic decisions, which are self-centered, focused on us, and that's fine. I mean, the, 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 you know, I'm going hiking later on. That's kind of self-centered. Um, but then there's eudaimonic decisions, which are other centered. And we as human beings have to have a balance uh, between how much are we focused on our, our personal um, success and fulfillment, and then how much are we focused on making the world a better place. So, I, I love that framing. Uh, that is fantastic. Greg, it has just been a real pleasure talking with you. I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in just a few more minutes. Yeah. Uh, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners a little bit more about how they can get connected with you, how they can uh, work with you and your team, uh, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah. So uh, connect with us. I'm, I'm pretty uh, um, connected on LinkedIn, uh, Greg Sloan. Uh, the company is Go Beyond. Our, our website is trygobeyond.com. Uh, we sell into organizations, uh, both large and small. Um, you know, final topic for today. Um, well, well, let me share my purpose. My purpose is, is I've really honed it over the years is to help creative leaders figure out how to leave a mark. And we as individuals, again, going back to the human existence, we want to know that we matter, right? Uh, I think of the old, the rock or the tree that says Joe was here. Um, and, and the reality of life is do what it takes so people can look back and say, yeah, John left his mark. He, he, he really changed. You know, w- one, of the, one of the greatest leaders I think we can all uh, agree upon is Steve Jobs. And in, in the, in the, no one will ever forget what he did to change the way we operate. And this vision that he had many years ago I would say when you look back at it, he accomplished his purpose because he really changed the way technology, he really changed the way we interact, um, the the ability to build a beautiful product that's that's, uh, functional and enjoyable. So do your thing, man. Everybody go out there and and live on purpose. That's sort of my final remark. I love it. Be bold, be brave, uh, follow your purpose. I love your your way of thinking about the percentages of the work that you do because we all do things yeah. that we don't necessarily like so much. It's not a matter it's of part like, of it. It's part of it, right? We can't rid ourselves of of everything that we tolerate or we don't necessarily like. 
Uh, but if you're way out of whack, if you're way out of balance, look for ways to recalibrate that. Uh, and, and in some cases, that means a new job, that means a career shift, that means new opportunities. In other cases, that might just mean picking up a new hobby, um, you know, trying, trying other things that can bring you additional meaning and fulfillment. Uh, it's different for everybody. So ultimately, yeah. be willing to, to explore that and embrace it. It's not something to be fearful of. It can bring yeah. more satisfaction in life. And sometimes it's not a new job. It just might be a new role in your organization. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Greg, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Greg and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.